I wanted to also ask you about uh, your animal farming. Let's talk about uh, uh, creatures. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, um, the majority of our, um, our farm is in this corn, soybean, corn, oats, hay rotation. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need cattle or some kind of a ruminant to consume the hay. Mm -hmm. And then we have oats and we need something to eat the oats. So uh, the young calves and the young pigs uh, fit into this program to use up the corn, the beans. Mm -hmm. We even use our own beans. Oh, do you? Extrude them, mm -hmm. or you could roast them so that we can uh, keep our own beans and not truck them off someplace mm -hmm. and then have to. That takes a lot. Buy of something else. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes a lot of energy to do that. That's mm -hmm. not very ener energy efficient. No. So that we can use all the uh, crops that we uh, raise here, and then the animals furnish the manure mm -hmm. to uh, give us the basis of our, our fertility program. But in uh, what we're what we're learning, that even with, and then we even use um, human waste from the city of Boone. The sludge is brought out here, and, and that is dumped into a bunker with our manures, and then we take that. So you mix it. And, and bring it and put it back on the fields. Mm -hmm. Does the city pay you to take it away, or do, you don't have to pay them, I hope? Uh, in our situation, we're getting some reimbursement now, and um, I, probably, if you'd ask that, we're finding, even with all of that, that we're needing some starter fertilizer, some nitrogen. To, to that question uh, several times, you would get several different answers that some farmers are buying it, uh, some is free and some are being paid to take it, so it all depends on the situation. We probably do not need uh, the sludge here because we have the livestock to help build structure and soil, but I uh, believed in the idea that what came from the farm should be returned to the farm, and, and we, we got to get into that mode. Uh, probably some neighbors here that do not have any livestock could probably better utilize this as a soil um, builder than, 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 than we need it. But mm -hmm. anyway, so to um, start this system, because with ridge till, uh, we have not excited the soil to release nutrients, and we've got cover crops that are, we're holding nitrogen to, so it doesn't get in the groundwater. Well, it takes some time to get release, and mm -hmm. we're going to, uh, plant the crop and take out the cover crop and cover up the manure and plant the crop all in one operation. So we need some nitrogen to get that system started. Have you tried it without the extra nitrogen? Yes, and it yes, has yes, and I've learned the hard way mm -hmm. that it, uh, mm -hmm. we're just kind of tying one hand behind her back that the corn, uh, it just doesn't grow. And since we're trying to do this with the least amount of herbicides, we need a plant that comes out of the ground, gets ahead of the weeds. Mm -hmm. And so it, that all kind of fits together. So we buy some starter fertilizers mm -hmm. some, a lot with some potassium because we're short of potassium in this area. Mm -hmm. And there's something about ridge till that uh, there's a problem with potassium uptake. So we're trying to oh. solve those problems. So you just because there's a problem, if it's a good technique or technology, you don't want to throw it away. You want no. to find your way, work your way through it. And, uh, and find the answers. And take what you need to apply to your right, own right. situation. About how much nitrogen per acre? Uh, somewhere in, I would say, we're going to run a test next year. Somewhere between 25 and 50 pounds of starter nitrogen is mm -hmm. needed to get our crops off if we're putting all three of those things together, mm -hmm. the ridge till, the cover crop, and the manures. We mm -hmm. call that the triple nitrogen whammy because it, it really puts you behind the eight ball as far as nitrogen release early. Mm -hmm. Later, this releases nice and slow, and crops get it. It doesn't end up um, in the groundwater. And with the National Tilts Lab, see, I've been applying, applying 20 tons of manure to the acre. Well, am I a polluter? Mm -hmm. And so they're finding, you know, they've, they've dug soil cores 15 feet in the ground and they find the levels that are very low mm -hmm. and comparable to a conventional system right alongside. So that was encouraging. We didn't know what the answer would no. be to that. No. So that was encouraging. So that says again that the organic release is slow, mm -hmm. but it's too slow in early spring. So we have to do something about mm -hmm. that.
so you do that. The animals, though, you don't consider to be uh, um, money makers. You don't you don't have pigs and cattle, bottom line for money purposes. For well, that's really uh, Iowa. You know, hogs are the mortgage lifters of Iowa. So uh, I like that. I hadn't they, heard them called they, that. They uh, they have done all right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we do not take the crop or the livestock and sell it as a premium. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, they pay the bills. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. they pay the bills. And you don't raise them though in confinement. Uh, I, or not, do you? not in complete confinement. No, mm -hmm. we do have them in pens. They have sunshine and fresh air. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a very low area, and it's either dusty or it's muddy. Mm -hmm. And so we have cement yards. And so we're trying to devise a system where if you get to cement, you run into other problems of uh, where, where is this manure going to go. Sure. And so we're trying to put bedding with it, put it in um, bunker boards so that we save it, and then we take it to, the, to our pit and hold it and put it on a crop in the spring and cover it up. So we're trying to do the best we know how to make the best possible use out of those nutrients. Mm -hmm. Do you sell your um, pigs or your cattle as organically grown? No, no. Because of this, uh, these little problems that uh, we need some potassium here mm -hmm. uh, to really be efficient. Mm -hmm. We need some nitrogen early to be really efficient. So mm -hmm. according to the organic standards we have that are now in place, uh, we do not qualify mm -hmm. uh, under that standard. I asked you about uh, uh, getting assistance, and you said that you you took it from wherever you could get it from people who come to visit your farm. Uh, I know that you've worked with Rodale, from what you said. Uh, have you worked very much uh, recently with the land grant universities or with the USDA? Uh, that has come on the scene very strong in the. Uh oh, I would say approximately the last five years. Don't hold me to that, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's pretty close. About 87, it seemed to be uh, a real breakthrough. When the national picture uh, uh, started and, to change. And, and in Iowa, it changed. Um, we started Practical Farmers of Iowa in 1985, which was a grassroots uh, farmer organization interested in profitable environmentally sound agriculture. And you were involved in starting that, yes. weren't you? I was going to ask you about the Practical Farmers. So that at that time, probably the establishment was not too interested mm -hmm. in what we were doing. But by 1987, that picture had com changed completely, that they were anxious to, to fund the organization and, and things like that. And um, we have a, a little cute saying, you know, you ask about researchers, that we know, now have a new disease on this farm. <laughs> it's called researcher blight. <laughs> that there are places in the field where they get out of their cars that uh, they kind of tramp the ground. <laughs> this, this is a funny, and I, I appreciate what they're doing very much. Yes. I'm very tickled what's mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. So that uh, um, Dr. Duran out of Nebraska kind of really started his ball rolling that he's been doing, coming clear from Lincoln. Really? For, for two years, and then... Uh, is he an agronomist? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, no, he's a uh, microbiologist. Oh. Uh, with the USDA. Mm -hmm. and, and then he had a, um, a good friend who was Dr. Carlin who came from the southeast, he's one of the Carolinas, and he's now at the Tilth Lab. Mm -hmm. So then that got, he was involved with Duran's experiments and then he's involved now with the Tilth Lab, uh, the comparison study of conventional and alternative farming between two different, our system and a neighbor system. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and then Dr. Cruz is involved with the strips, and there's been others uh, down through the years that... Uh, and since we have done the randomized replicated trials, that made it very easy for the academic people to come and do more complicated um, testing mm -hmm. on top of, of our basic trials. And it's been very, um, very nice, mm -hmm. a very nice working relationships. So out of this, with Practical Farmers of Iowa, when we were funded with oil overcharge money through mm -hmm. the Department of Agriculture, Iowa Department of Agriculture, that um, 
our coordinator became an extension position at Iowa State University, and that may have been one of the first for a grassroots sustainable ag uh, group having a contract with the university, a subcontract with the university, and that, that's been very helpful. And it's got to be a cooperative affair. It wasn't years ago when we uh, started in 67, but things have yeah. come a long ways, and uh, we're trying to get um, people going back and forth that, you know, some farmers who felt they were burnt and didn't want to have anything to do with establishment, they're going back through the doors mm -hmm. and the researchers are coming out through the doors and working on the farms and it's good, yes. a very good situation. 